Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for revealing your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. I'm sure that most of you have seen in movies or in cartoons that the struggle for self-control is often portrayed as the devil on one shoulder encouraging impulsive behaviour and the angel on the other urging control. Whereas the angel represents consciousness, the devil represents temptation, these were often used to depict an inner conflict of a character. Say, for example, you're about to eat that last piece of dessert that you've been longing for all day. But as you take it out of the fridge, the unspeakable happens and you accidentally drop it on the floor. Although your dessert looks fine, you can't for the life of you remember the last time you mopped the floor. You hear this voice saying, or rather screaming at you, five second rule, while the other one says, too bad, throw it in the bin. For those of you who would dust it off and eat it still, I would say you'd have some very angry Pharisees and scribes screaming at you. Even though no Old Testament text calls for anyone to wash their hands before eating, certain practices had arisen among some Jews by the time of Jesus. In today's Gospel reading from Mark chapter 7, we find that the Pharisees were upset with some of Jesus' disciples because they were not properly observing the traditions of the elders at mealtime. The Pharisees had noticed that the disciples were not performing their ceremonial washings of their hands before they ate. They criticized those disciples, eating without cleaning their hands, which implicated Jesus too as the leader. Before the scribes and the Pharisees would eat, they would pour water over their hands with their fingers pointed upwards these waters were kept in special jars and guarded to be free from any impurities. They then poured water again over their hands from the wrist, this time holding their hands downwards. It was thought that in this fashion, it would purify their hands from any ceremonial uncleanliness. Now, this action had nothing to do with hygiene. It was merely a ceremonial washing, which had become very important tradition among them. This alone means quite little, as the wider Jewish population at the time didn't exhibit strict consistencies in such matters. Different Jews followed different tradition, like some of Jesus' disciples. However, this tradition of the scribes and Pharisees upheld had become more important than the thing it represented. And so Jesus tells them, for you set aside a commandment of God and hold tightly to the tradition of men. Jesus saw through the dead tradition. He saw that they were more concerned with the outward things rather than the things that it really mattered. Their worship was in vain because they exalted tradition to the status of doctrine. I believe, however, it's very important that we don't betray the Pharisees and scribes as completely bad. Jesus called them hypocrites. But... The thing is that they were dedicated to obey and pleasing God. They observed distinctive practices, such as kosher food and circumcision, that helped them maintain their identity as God's people in the world that attempted them to worship the neighbor's gods. The tradition, which came into question in this text, grew out of the need to maintain that identity. To be clear, Jesus does not dismiss the issue of defilement as significant. He does not declare the Mosaic law as unimportant. He disagrees with the scribes and Pharisees' interpretation of certain laws. When Jesus tells them that there is nothing on the outside a person, a person that we're going in can defile, but things that come outside, that is what defile. He was referencing Isaiah, a passage which introduces a contrast between the lips, mouth, and the heart. Jesus builds on this contrast to transform it into an issue of defilement and how a human body becomes polluted. Simply put, impurity is a matter of the heart and not the mouth. The parabolic nature of Jesus' comments supports the conclusion that hand washing and foods are not the main concern here. 
Instead, the gospel reading speaks more plainly about the source of defilement, which turn out to be more internal than external. Therefore, it's more about who you are as a person and not about the food or filth that you avoid. Jesus reasserts that the law's basic concern to be about restraining evil and avoiding defilement. But here's the problem that arises for many of us. This evil and defilement that Jesus speaks of stems from a place rather deeply embedded within our own very selves. Today, Satan is not the cause of the wrongdoing. This evil, in fact, comes from our very own heart. The human heart or the human will remains a very complex thing, placing blame on a diabolical entity lurking in the shadows, diverts the attention from our own tendency to rebel and destroy. We who are gathered here online as holy hermits do worship a little differently. We are not gathered under the one roof of a church, but online from our own homes. We partake in a spiritual communing and not a physical one. We listen to music rather than sing along with our hymn books and so much more. But that doesn't matter as long as we are pure of heart. It's important to know that God is more concerned about who we are on the inside than the outward ceremonies and traditions that we observe. For all we know, we can pray standing up or we can pray sitting down and still never really pray. We can wash our hands a thousand times and still have sin in our heart. We can know every word of the Bible and the hymn books and still not know God. We can worship in a church every Sunday, all our lives, and still never experience holy ground. We can take bread and a cup at communion and still never commune with God. Saying that, I feel very blessed to be a part of Holy Hermits, your loving and wholesome community. And so remember that it's not the outward form of tradition that matters. It is what lies in our hearts that counts. Amen.